That is some fantastic music. Today we got some F1 2021 content. A big thank you to EA and Codemasters for giving me this opportunity. We're going to be driving as Sebastian Vettel in the Aston Martin around Belgium today in a 100% race at 110% AI at an increased safety car rate just to see what that will change. We now have the option to customize the frequency of the safety car so uh, more customization for league races I guess and uh, career modes so It'd be interesting to see what people do with that. Uh, just going to customize my setup that I've developed in time trial a little bit to suit the Aston Martin a bit better. But as you can see, we've had a brake failure going into turn one. And we're going to be starting the race from the back. And it will be 44 laps of this Belgian Grand Prix. So if this video does seem a bit condensed down, it's because we've only got 15 minutes to produce these videos. So I'm going to try and make this 100% race fit into 15 minutes somehow. As you can see, there's some new cutscenes that look pretty fantastic. And I can't wait to dive into all the little interesting little bits and pieces that they've added to the game. Like the handling model, I'll gloss over that a little bit. But uh, for now, let's talk about strategy. We're going to try and do a one stop for this race. I have no idea how the tire wear is going to work. I don't know what the tire models are like. I haven't even driven on the medium tires yet. So we're about to find all this out for the first time. I'm not sure what to do with the fuel. So I've just reduced it down uh, just to one lap of extra fuel. And uh, we're going to head out onto our formation lap now. As you'll see, they've updated the UI. It's now like the Halo sort of UI that you see on TV, but just flat across the bottom of the screen, which looks really clean in my opinion. I found that when doing this formation lap, it was a little bit more difficult to warm up the front tires than the rear. Obviously, you can generate wheel spin when warming up the rear tires, but the front tires, you pretty much need to just rely on braking hard and uh, just weaving those tires. But it's five lights here for the Belgian Grand Prix, 44 laps around this circuit. Let's try overtake the four cars in front of us as quick as possible. As we know, they've got a bit of a deficit to the midfield cars ahead. Latifi absolutely sends it, so I'm going to just try and follow him through the source here. But yeah, he just went from 19th place to 12th place at one point. Now he's back down to 13th, but we made up a lot of places as well. I'm happy to be P15 coming from P20 after turn one. Being a little bit cautious through ready on Anna Rouge, it is possible to lose the car pretty easily on the curbs. We obviously have a lot more weight on the car due to the heavy fuel load. And I'm running a little bit more of an aggressive setup with the stiffness of the car. So the curbs can be a little bit more aggressive. Onto the back of Ocon now, we're going to try and maximize the downforce by avoiding being right up the back of Ocon's gearbox there. Looking up the inside, uh, down into this right hand corner, I know that this is a lot more satisfying to drive than it was last year just due to the handling model and uh, we go around the outside of Ocon, make the move stick and I instantly check to see if we've got damage because if you receive damage to the floor or the side pods, I also made a video about this, you receive a huge amount of drag and it basically rules you out of the race. You may as well uh, just DNF because you cannot repair it in the pits either. Almost had a big moment there uh, through the third sector but uh, we managed to keep it on the road. But yeah, as I was saying, if you get even the slightest amount of damage to the side pod, it just creates so much drag that you're a sitting duck. It almost had a massive moment there. Doesn't help exactly having dirty air while on the curbs either. Going up the inside of Latifi here just before we go through Blanc Chamon. And I think this is the weak spot for the AI. If you want to deploy all your ERS, this is the place to do it to try and make an overtake. I think it's similar to last year's game as well. The AI seemed to be really strong through uh, the Camel Straight as they have DRS and use their ERS deployment there most of the time. But yeah, we're now on lap two, up into P13 already. We're making really good progress. Onto the back of science now, I noticed that the Ferrari car has a significant disadvantage in a straight line speed. Uh, so they're pretty much a sitting duck, especially around a circuit like Spa. So it's not really a challenge for a Mercedes powered Aston Martin with a low downforce or low drag setup. Going around the outside of science now, which is actually convenient because we pick up the slipstream from Sonoda. So I do recommend uh, going from the outside down Camel Straight as you will pick up the slipstream from the car in front as they stick to the racing line. But we're all over the back of Sonoda, that didn't take very long at all. And we're going to look up the inside here going downhill, but uh, just not enough. Actually, he's opened the door and we've made a bit of contact there. Very risky because if we do get that side port or floor damage, it will basically rule us out of this race because it doesn't even matter if there's any safety cars. There's no way to repair that damage. And we're going around the outside of Puon, making it stick. This seemed to be a really weak spot for me throughout the race as the AI very strong. I think it's due to my low downforce setup, just not being able to carry as much speed through there with a the lower uh, arrow on the front wing. 
Moving up to P10 now as Gasly is the first of the soft runners to make a pit stop and we have a yellow flag. I think that is a Ferrari going slow uh, on the penultimate or the last corner uh, just after the bus stop chicane. And yes, that is science out of this race. And I went back and looked and it, it was just a reliability failure. We've been informed that the safety car is out. There appears to have been an issue with multiple stopped vehicles on the track. The officials are deploying the safety car due to multiple cars being stopped on track. Mind your delta. So it looks like Codemasters have added some more dialogue for Jeff to bring to the races. It's it's a bit refreshing for Jeff to explain in further detail uh, why the safety car has come out. I've actually heard him talk about debris on the circuit as well and whether or not that will trigger a safety car, but it says like the marshals were able to clean up the mess uh, and there'll be no safety car deployed. We actually double stacked here. It doesn't seem as bad as last year's game, but frustrating nonetheless. We're going to make the most of the safety car period, go back onto the soft set of tires and hopefully make one more pit stop and go into mediums towards the end of the race. I've just seemed to follow what everyone else was doing, seeing as the medium tire is a bit of an unknown to me. I don't know how it performs. I don't know how low grip it's going to be. And unfortunately, we've popped out just behind Raikkonen. Would have been nice to grab that extra position, but getting ready to get going again. One thing I wanted to touch on, the game actually allows you to go into lean fuel mix uh, during safety car periods. But as soon as the safety car ends, you're only limited to a uh, standard fuel mix. Now, this is because there is no more engine modes allowed for the drivers to have access to in the real life sport as well. So all your fuel management has to be done using your throttle pedal and uh, short shifting uh, if you so choose to do that. But where I found it difficult was if you've overfueled the car, as in this instance I have, because I've never done this before, uh, I don't know how to burn the fuel fast enough because the engine overheats so much during these races now if you follow a car your engine will overheat so that's why I was just trying to overtake as quick as possible getting past Raikkonen down Camel straight there and uh, yeah the engine temperatures just rise so quickly this year I really haven't figured out a way to manage the engine temps uh, maybe short shifting or uh, coasting into corners may help but as far as I'm aware staying behind a car for too long will just dramatically increase your engine temperatures uh, without a doubt as you can see 120 degrees now just getting stuck behind the clear i think it is important more now than ever to get in front of the cars and avoid traffic as you saw in the bottom right hand corner i've got rear wing damage or not rear wing damage but my rear wing flap is stuck open my actual drs flap is uh unable to close and uh, so we're facing a little bit of issues now the rear wing is stuck open we need you to pit in so long story short I decided not to pit because I found that I had enough rear downforce and as you can see I didn't need to activate the DRS as it's already open and uh, I'm not gonna lie I was overpowered at every straight in this circuit now I have enough downforce although it was tricky to navigate some corners I uh, just had to be a little bit more cautious but other than that I was so overpowered in a straight line, especially in the third sector here. You can just see us closing in on Stroll. Having that DRS open the entire time is just a massive advantage. Like I thought, you know, a reliability issue would cause us to have more difficulties than uh, have like an advantage at all. But now we're going to just try and make the most of the situation we have at the moment. And uh, while our DRS flap is stuck open, as you can see, uh, just going down a rouge, which is actually really scary, going up the hill here, it's very easy to lose the car with such little rear downforce as it is. Uh, but yeah, just absolutely breezing past Stroll there, breezing past Alonso. Alonso can't even defend. And uh, yeah, we're just going to make hay while the sun shines here. And hopefully <laughs> our rear flap can uh, stay open as long as possible. We ended up starting to catch up to Perez, but this is just the advantage we had over the third sector. Watch Alonso, it was at half a second at the start of this back straight kind of uh, Blanchemont area. And uh, by the time we enter the bus stop chicane, we've gained more than half a second, but we do lose the rear end a bit there. Obviously the rear instability is a thing. I actually set up the car to have a lot of rear wing as it already was. 
So I think that's kind of helping us in this situation. But we're going to make another pit stop here to go onto the medium tires, hopefully towards the end of the race. And uh, unfortunately, by this point, that means our rear wing will get repaired. Uh, if, if it wasn't already repaired, it will be repaired uh, in this pit stop as uh, the radio wanted me to come in and uh, make that pit stop a lot earlier, but I decided to stay out. So uh, this will be the first time trying out the new medium tires in this game. I haven't driven medium tires at all. Time trial running has all been on soft tires, so exiting the pits now, and you'll see right here, marbles have actually picked up onto the tire there, so that was pretty cool to see that little addition uh, brought to the game. Lap 31, and we have another retirement it's Kimi Raikkonen that is out of the session and that is another safety car informed that the safety car is out there appears to have been an issue with multiple stopped vehicles on the track the officials are deploying the safety car due to multiple cars being stopped on track mind your delta so yeah Jeff are uh, giving us another description as to what actually happened to bring out the safety car another thing I want to note is if my driving hasn't been up to standard it is because I have a broken left wrist so I'm driving this on the wheel with the cast on on my left arm, I uh, don't have the strength that I would normally have, so a lot of the left handers can be difficult for me, but uh, I think we're getting along nicely. Uh, the game has been really fun for me so far, and the handling model has been really fun to drive. Uh, the best way to describe the handling model for this year is it feels like you got more traction coming out of corners. It feels like it rewards you for getting on the power earlier, even though there is less downforce definitely in this game than last game. It feels that the bumps or the track play more of a role in the traction that you get from the car. So you can uh, abuse the flat curbs when you run wide on an exit of a corner a lot more as uh, we now restart on fresh set of soft tires might I add. So we should be the cat amongst the pigeons at this stage of the race as we only have nine laps to go onto the back of Leclerc now who is, like I said, a sitting duck in that Ferrari, not exactly fast in a straight line, but we do not have the advantage as we do a block pass going through Blanchemont there uh, on Leclerc, but we get through without making contact. Uh, nicely done, very aggressive, but that's what we're gonna need if we're gonna progress and make the most of these soft tires throughout the end of the race. Making this overtake on Lance Stroll, pick up the slipstream from Alonso, this time without the aid of DRS, we're gonna have to do it without it this time. Uh, Stroll actually comes back at us. I left him the space, but we've made contact. I checked the car just to make sure there's any damage on the car, but there is no damage. And uh, we get a warning for that, but I believe I left enough space for him uh, on the inside there. Coming up to the back of Alonso now, this is obviously the weak point, I think, for the AI. Going around the outside, which turns to the inside for the bus stop chicane, uh, making uh, absolute most of the soft tires at this point in the race. Alonso is going to fight this. Uh, he goes up the inside on the penultimate corner, but we just get superior traction coming out of that corner and are now attacking the back of Perez. So due to there being a bit more grip, we are now able to run a higher lock on the transmission on throttle. I find that you can run anywhere from even 70 to 80% without having any troubles. Going around the outside here of La Source, what a move that was, but anyways, yeah, as I was saying, uh, we can run higher transmission lock for on throttle and get away with it. I prefer to run a little bit lower though for the race just to preserve the rear tires. And uh, now, making our way onto the back of Norris. This is the penultimate lap of the race. We're going up the inside, make the move done. This actually was a very difficult move for, for me to catch up to him because Norris was driving really well. And uh, Mercedes versus Mercedes Power, obviously, down the straights doesn't exactly make it an easy move. But I don't think it was the best timing for me to make the overtake on Norris on the penultimate lap as he's going to come back at us and we don't have any battery left to fight him. And it's just going to be a clean cut move for Norris to overtake us on the Camel Straight. Nothing we could have done there to fight him. Who's, uh, who's I contrast? He actually just gaps us. He just had the pace. We didn't have the battery to fight him. And uh, we used all our battery to try and overtake him on the penultimate lap instead. So unfortunately, it looks like sixth place is going to be the best we're going to get. Which I think, personally, is not a bad effort. 110% AI, 100% race. And uh, in the Aston Martin coming from 20th on the grid with a broken arm. Not a bad effort. I really enjoy this new handling model. It feels like a more realistic way of what the car would handle in real life. And uh, yeah, so it rewards the player for trying to straight line the exit of corners a bit more uh, just to get on the power earlier. Maximize the downforce. The faster you go, the more downforce you get. And you really start to feel that around tracks such as Spain and Britain 
Uh, but yeah, you'll see that in my comparison video that I will be releasing. So yeah, no more fuel modes. You gotta manage your fuel by yourself. Uh, fueling the car to the right limit is absolutely vital, it seems. And it's now impossible to run at 100% brake pressure and 50% brake bias. You gotta set it towards the front a bit more. This is all if you're running no assists or else you will spin out. And of course, the last thing I wanted to say is the rear tire pressures need to be pumped up a bit more or else you'll lose all rear stability. So you can't run minimum uh, rear tire pressures anymore. It is absolutely vital for stability that you increase those pressures. And uh, if you liked the video, please leave a like and tune into my other videos for more information as I'll go into detail about the handling model and in more depth. And until next time, I'll see you all in a brand new one.